good morning, everybody. It's uh, good to be together again, virtually, albeit, but still, it's good to be together again and to uh, lift up the name of Jesus and worship and open the Word and watch the Word come to life in us today. And I'm, I'm praying that the God will just touch you and, and give you hope and life and uh, the bright uh, outlook on tomorrow, even in all that's going on around us. We have the Lord Jesus Christ in us, and as a result, we can have hope for tomorrow and, and life for today. But I want you to pause right now from whatever you're doing. You may be sitting in your living room or wherever you might be, and lift up a song with me. And let's watch God do something good today. In the presence of His Holy Spirit, life comes. As you know, we're all in a shelter in place, and I was beginning to sing this song, Matchless Name. And there's that verse there that talks about our situation right now and the shelter that this song is talking about is not the shelter of our homes. It's talking about the shelter of Jesus. It goes like this. Your name is my shelter. I rest in you. I'm hiding in your shadow. My strength renewed, no weapon formed against me, no evil shall befall me, every plague has to fall at your name. And every tongue confess the matchless name of all. Say that again, Jesus. Jesus, I call on Jesus, name above all names, highly exalted to your name. The matchless name of
Jesus with me. Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being the matchless name. There's no other name among heaven where we can be saved and he has all authority and all power to deal with the issues in your life. Isn't that incredible? Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you have raised to light up. Say that again. Death could not hold you. Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. Praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival. You have no rival. You have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. name it is the name of Jesus. Say that again. What a power. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. And because his name is powerful, we can pray in that name. And Jesus hears us and Jesus responds. So I want to pray for you right now. There's many needs out there. There's people that are going through tremendous hardship in their life. Some of our people have lost loved ones. Some of our people have, are going through things like cancer. Some of our people are going through changes in their life in terms of finances. But I want you to know that the same power that raised Christ from the dead is the same power that works in us today. And so I want to pray for you and with you right now. You may be uh, sick in your body. Would you, you could put your hand wherever it might need to be in order to see God move in that particular area of your body. But let's pray. If you want, you could join hands with the persons next to you. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you are all powerful. Lord, you created the heavens and the earth. Everything in it, every intricate little atom, every intricate little cell as well. And you formed all those things to make all that we are. And so, Lord, when you, we come to you with our needs, particularly physical needs that need to be healed, this does not surprise you. And I pray, God, that you'll reach down and you'll touch our people, that you will touch these people as they are holding themselves wherever they need to be healed or they're carrying a burden for that which needs to be accomplished in their life. And I pray that victory shall come into them and the power and the peace of the Lord shall overwhelm them. Jesus, as you have touched so many, Lord, touch today. Let the power of God be known. We pray, Father, for our nation that is going through this tremendous pandemic as well as around the world. Lord, I pray that there will be a resolve to this and it will diminish. And once again, we will walk in a people as a people who are healed, walk as a people who are united and touch, Lord, touch our, touch our land, touch our world. And Lord, I, I just pray specifically for people that are going through the issues of, of circumstances in their life, whether it be finances or 
uncertainty in terms of fa family or love them and supply their be Jehovah Jireh or be the one who supplies be Jehovah Shalom the one who is our peace be Jehovah, Jehovah Nisi our banner and ask Lord that all of this shall be accomplished because you are our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ thank you Father we just praise you in your great name Amen Amen well, praise the Lord. Thanks, Debbie. I just want to share an announcement here, and then, and then uh, you can go if you want. I was uh, driving into the church, and I looked out over the islands of the parking lot, and I was just amazed. At, uh, remember the plea I sent out here last week in terms of the weeds that were overgrowing? And as I've come out here, there have been people out here pulling weeds, and I want to say thank you. To all of you who came out, took the time, came out, you pulled so many weeds, and it is beautiful out there. And so I just want to acknowledge to you that I'm thankful for even our weed pullers. And there's people that are working behind the scenes. I've been so impressed with uh, our people that we've been connecting with each other and, and helping meet each other's needs. And I, I thank you for that, because that's where, that's where it's really at. Church is not in this building. Church is out there with you. And connecting with each other and walking, walking in the power of God and uh, in connecting with people and connecting with neighbors. Uh, people have been making cookies for their neighborhoods and people have been delivering things. We had, I had a call last week of somebody that was wanting to know a name of somebody that was in their church. They didn't know their name, so they described them to us and they wanted to make sure that they had what they needed. Wow, I just, that's incredible. So I want to say, that's where the church is, and that, that is touching people's lives. And I want to thank you, too, in terms of your giving. Uh, as of this moment, our bills are paid. And uh, I don't know about tomorrow, but we're going to pray that God will meet each need in terms of our finances, in terms of the material needs that we have. And so I want to say thank you for your faithfulness. And because you are faithful, we are able to move forward. And so I just ask that... Uh, as you will do what the Lord will direct and lead you, he, He's going to bless us in a great way, uh, in ways that. And I'm looking forward to the day that I can stand in front of this congregation and say, "I want you to see what God has done." Amen. Amen. Well, today, as you know, there's a lot of anxiety going on. There's a lot of anxiousness that's creeping up in people and the issues that they're facing in terms of the. Uh, virus and the shelter in place and of course our political system and the financial things that are going on and I tell you there's just a lot of anxiety going on in our world and as I was pondering it as I've been thinking about it I thought I'd like to deal with uh, anxiousness today and indeed next week as well we're going to talk about some things that will help us through uh, the anxiousness that wants to creep up and by the way Anxiousness has been hitting all of us, every one of us, at certain times. And, and so I think the Word of God gives us some answers. In fact, I'm calling this Tools for Dealing with Anxiety. There are tools that are in our toolbox that will help us deal with the anxiety that's in our life. I don't know about you, but I think the right tool for the right job makes all the difference in the world. I was doing Steve cleaning uh, recently of the, of the wallpaper in our kitchen and I thanked God for that steam cleaner because that steam cleaner made removing the wallpaper much easier than if I was going to scrape it off with a putty knife. The right tool makes all the difference in the world. Well, the Bible gives us tools that will help us deal with anxiety and the fears that want to creep up. And all through the Bible, we see that there's a lot of anxiousness where the Holy Spirit, where God, where Jesus came into their lives and encouraged them and helped them. Let me just give you three quick ones, and they're, they're all familiar. The one that I just love in terms of this, in this uh, context is the disciples in the boat in the midst of the storm. There they are in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, and the storm comes up, and they're fighting for their lives, and Jesus is asleep in the stern of the boat, and they finally come to him and say, don't you even care that we're all going to die? And of course, Jesus stands and says, peace be still. You see, they were pretty anxious at that moment in the fact that they were ready to lose their lives. Well, 
That was an anxious moment. And in that anxious moment, Jesus showed up. Well, there's another anxious moment when Joshua was leading the people into the promised land. Can you imagine Moses was dead and these millions of people, and he's got to lead them into the promised land? The, all the responsibility fell on him. And there in that first chapter of Joshua, we see the very specific words to Joshua, fear not. Why? Because Joshua was pretty, pretty anxious. And then we see, we run to the New Testament. And Saul, if you remember Saul, he was the persecutor of Christians. In fact, Saul becomes Paul. But before he's Paul, he's Saul. And he's on the road to Damascus, and there he gets, the, he's, he's on a horse, he's knocked off, his horse, off of his horse by a vision with Jesus. And when he sees Jesus, he's instantly transformed in his heart to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And a young man named Ananias was told, to minister to Saul. And Ananias, after he hears that word, he, he says, are you kidding me? Are you sure you want me? Why? Because Saul was a persecutor of Christians and he was told to go and minister to Saul. He was pretty anxious. You see, those are anxious moments, just in examples of throughout the Bible, how people have gone through anxiety their entire lives. Well, it's time for us to look at the Bible. And looking at the Bible, we can find some tools that God has given to us that we might be able to use in order to deal with the anxiety that wants to creep up in us. Well, in dealing with uh, these tools, I like to look at a very common passage of Scripture, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7, where it says, Do not be anxious about any, anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, Present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Notice he says, don't be anxious for anything. But how? He gives us, he says, but in everything, by prayer and petition, let your request be made known to God. The very first thing that this passage talks about in dealing with anxiousness in our life is prayer. Why prayer? Because prayer connects us with God. Well, and that's why I use prayer as the very first tool in our toolbox. You see, prayer in this passage of Scripture speaks of, uh, when it uses four words for prayer, it talks about prayer and petition and thanksgiving and request. Prayer speaks of how we are to approach God in, in, a, in a heart of prayer. Petition speaks of how we are to bring to God a specific need. We petition God for a specific need. And then thanksgiving speaks of an attitude of heart which should always accompany our prayers. We're grateful for God. We're thankful for God. It's a heart attitude. And then fourthly, request. Speaking of other specific and definite needs that we might have, that we can bring these needs before the Lord. All of this is wrapped up in this passage of Scripture in Philippians and talks about prayer. Well, prayer was important enough for Jesus that when he was on his way to the cross, the night that he was betrayed, we find him in the garden, and he was praying in that garden of Gethsemane. And he was praying in that garden of Gethsemane that he would be strengthened in order to deal with the ordeal that was to come. And he had the disciples come with him to pray, but the Bible says they fell asleep. And if you remember, he goes to them, he says, could you not wait with me just one hour? And basically he's saying, I need strength. And I need strength from God. I need strength from those people around me. And when the disciples let him down, he still went back to God in order to glean the strength that he needed for his life. Prayer is important if we're going to deal with anxiety. Prayer is important if we're going to deal with fear. Prayer is important if we're going to deal with the unknowns. There's several things about prayer, though, that I think it's important to discuss today. Because prayer accomplishes much more than just bringing needs before the Lord. I've talked with many people about prayer. And you know what they say? I just can't pray a long time. And the reason is, is because I run out of things to pray for. And I say, you're missing what prayer is all about. It's not just bringing needs before the Lord. It's not like we're making a checklist to God, say, God, would you please answer this prayer and answer this prayer and answer this prayer. Prayer is much more than that. Can you imagine a relationship, let's say a husband and wife, where the only time they talk with each other is when they want something? 
Would you please mow the lawn? Would you please do the dishes? Would you please cook dinner? Would you please trim the hedge? Would you please go out and buy this? If, think of that. What kind of relationship will that be if you don't interact on a more intimate level? It's the same thing with God. God uses prayer that we would have not just communicate with Him, but that we would have communion with Him. And so there's several things that prayer does that, that helps us in dealing with anxiety. The first thing that I want to talk about in terms of prayer and what it does in our life is that prayer transforms our heart. Prayer transforms our heart. And you see, this, I think, is the most important thing. Because out of the abundance of the heart, let me put it another way, as we are in our heart, we are in our lives. As we live in our heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, it oozes out into our life. So what's if we have peace in our heart, our life will have peace. And so what we want prayer to do is transform our heart. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in transforming our heart, we're seeing that God is, is shaping us and working in us in order to help us deal with the circumstances of our lives. It was just yesterday. I, for whatever reason, I was feeling just a little anxious. A little unsure. And so I got up that morning, yesterday morning, and it was before sunrise, and I grabbed my chai tea, went out to the fire pit that I have, and I lit the fire, and there in the darkness of the morning, I said, Lord, here I am. Work on my heart. Transform my heart. Transform it from fear to faith. Transform it from weakness to strength. Look deep in the recesses of my being, and shape my heart. Shape my heart into the image that you have for me. Shape my heart in the ways that you want to shape me so that I can reflect you and then I can be filled with peace. The very first thing that prayer does to us is it transforms our heart. It changes us. The Bible continually speaks of how the wickedness of our hearts are transformed. We need to be changed in our hearts. And so I encourage you, pray, if for anything, Say, Lord, transform my heart. And that takes time. You don't, you don't just drive down the road, Lord, transform my heart, although I'm not against that. And, and certainly the Lord hears you. But when you set yourself aside, remember Jesus many times pulled himself aside so that he could spend time with the Father. We have that same opportunity to pull ourselves aside that we can spend time with the Father. Transform our heart. And it's in the heart where anxiety develops. It's in the heart where we can allow these fears to fester. So Lord, transform my heart and let the peace of God that passes all understanding dwell in us, O oh God. I just pray right now for people that are going through fear. Lord, change their heart. Hear them, O oh God. Reach down into them and hold them and let that peace be upon them in Jesus' name. There's another thing that prayer does. Prayer aligns ourselves with God. When we pray, we bring ourselves into alignment with God. Remember the old days when we had a printer and you would print out a test page and you would have to match up these lines and what it would do, it would, it would align the heads so that they would be in, in perfect sync with each other. Listen, this is what prayer does to us. It brings us into alignment with God. Not, not away from God. But we are right where he wants us to be in perfect alignment with him. And when we are in that place, we can hear from God. We can act uh, on behalf of God for a world that needs to see God. Prayer aligns ourselves with God. Prayer brings inner strength to our being. Inner strength. Do you realize that we are not strong because we are on the outside? We're strong because we are on the inside. And prayer brings a strength. I can't tell you how many times after a time of prayer I'm able to get up and go and face the world. This is what prayer does. It, and, and if I was just praying, Lord, just take these knees and meet each one, that, that doesn't prepare me for the world. It's the bathing of the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life so that I can walk in the power of His Spirit. You see, I like that passage in Acts where it says, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And when we pray in the Spirit, there's an inner strength that comes into our life. And so we pray that, and then that strength comes. 
We also pray in order to receive divine perspective. Divine perspective. In other words, we are on this plane, but the Spirit is all around. And when we pray, we enter into the Spirit, and we're able to hear what God hears. We're able to see what God sees. We're able to speak the words of the Lord to a world that needs to hear the words of the Lord. We, in other words, what prayer does is it raises us up from the plane that we see in order to see what is really happening. And it happens, and that's not just in our world, by the way. It's in our marriage, it's in our relationships, it's in our circumstances, it's in our finances, it's in our retirement plans, it's, it's in our health, on and on and on. When we pray, we get divine perspective. And when we see divine perspective, then we can see a, a better picture of what's really going on. Prayer does that. Prayer also gives us godly direction. The world wants us to give us worldly direction. But God may have, us be going, uh, may have us go a different path, a different way. And prayer allows us to have a godly direction that is indeed much better for us in terms of our spirit and much better for us in terms of our life. So godly direction comes as a result of prayer. And then just one final thing here in this list. Uh, there's much more, but I just make it a simple list. Prayer allows us to lay our needs at his feet. Lay our knees at his feet. You know what I like? I like it when I have something on my task list. And then someone comes along, and for whatever reason, they say, Pastor, would you allow me to do this particular thing? I have to tell you, it is so, it is so freeing to be able to cross that off my task list so, because I know they're going to take care of it. Listen, this is God right here. When we pray, we lay our needs at his feet. I cannot tell, tell you how many times in our lives, Debbie's in my life, when we're facing a situation, and, and, and a situation by no fault of ours, or we just found ourselves there, and we've been able to say, Lord Jesus, our steps are ordered of you. You brought us to this place. We've simply been obedient to you. And so as a result, we're laying our needs at your feet. And in laying our knees at your feet, we're going to believe that you are going to supply that need. You will be Jehovah Jireh. And so we lay our needs at his feet. Lord, we lay our children at your feet. We lay our finances at your feet. We lay our health, our retirement. We, we lay all these things. Now certainly, the Lord's going to supply. And he's going to direct us in order to do particular things at particular times in order to facilitate those things. But listen, God will direct us he will lead us, and He will take care of us. So when we pray, we can lay things at His feet, and He will pick them up. So prayer does all this. I mean, just prayer transforms our heart. Prayer aligns ourselves with God. Prayer gives us inner strength. Prayer gives us divine perspective. Prayer gives us godly direction. And prayer allows us to lay ourselves, our needs at His feet. Can you see why the devil does not want us to pray? Can you see why we can find ourselves so busy that we don't pray? That an enemy knows that and he says, just keep them busy. They won't pray because if they pray, all of these things are going to happen in their lives. So listen, during this season, right now, would you make it a point to pray? It's not difficult. It's not that you have to have, write a list of things down. Just spend time with Jesus. Maybe it's a time in which you're worshiping. If you can play an instrument, you can play an instrument. Or if you listen to worship, I have, I have playlists that I can listen to and I begin to sing to. And it brings such a relief and a release, I should say, in my own heart and in my own life. And multiples of times I've seen anxiety begin to dissipate as I come into the presence of the Lord. I was just talking with someone recently. And, and you know what they said? They said, Pastor, with all the stuff that's going around, I have incredible peace in my heart, incredible peace in my life. And so I ask you, use that first tool, pray. The second tool I want to give to you is the tool of obedience. Do what you're supposed to do. Remember as a kid when you were doing something you weren't supposed to do, be doing and you knew that you were wrong? There was this anxiety that would keep, creep up in you. What if I get caught? What if people see it? No. Obey. And as you obey, there will be a protection there for you. This happened to me just recently. 
I got a spam. In fact, I think they call it malware, where they, uh, where they hold you ransom. And I got an email from an, one of my old email boxes, and it said in that email, in fact, they said that they gave me the password to my old email box. Can you believe that? How did they get my password? But you know what they did? They began to say that we, they have recordings of me, actual video recordings of me, watching pornographic sites. I couldn't believe it. First of all, I couldn't believe it. How did they get my password? But I thought, how did they come up with stuff like this? But let me tell you something. I wasn't afraid one bit. And you know why? I don't visit those sites. I don't go to those places. And because I've been obedient to stay away from those places, when the enemy wants to attack, it doesn't have any strength and doesn't have any force behind it because I don't do those things. So listen, when you are obedient to God, there is a, a, a place of peace in your life, a place of peace in your heart. Simply obey the Lord. The widow of Zarephath was told to fix her last meal for the prophet. And you know what? She says, we're going to do it and die. And the prophet says, don't worry about it. This is all paraphrased, by the way. And you know what she did? God met her need. Everything was met when she was obedient. And then let me just give you three and four, and then I'll save the rest for next time. Exercise your gifts. Do you know that God has given you a gift? And in Romans chapter 12, Debbie, help me out, would you? In, in, in Romans chapter 12, it gives us a list uh, and here's the quick list, teaching and leading and serving and prophesying and encouraging and giving and, and mercy. Do you know all those things God has given to each one of us, we each have a gift. And when we exercise that gift, do you realize there's a sense of fulfillment that comes when we exercise that gift? If it's teaching, Paul says, then you need to study in order to inform people. When you are leading, then lead in order to establish a way through the wilderness. When you are prophesying, help people build faith. And each of those gifts has, has a purpose. But you know what I find? When I exercise my gift, when I begin to utilize the gift that God has, there is a sense of strength, there's a sense of joy, there's a sense of peace, and the anxiety begins to be released. Exercise your gift. Well, I'm gonna, I'll talk about the rest of this later, but let me share something with you. All of this comes, all of this is fulfilled, I should say, when we come to Jesus. That's the very first thing that we do. We come to him. And when we come to Jesus, he hears our prayers and he responds. Not just to our needs, but to our heart, as I've mentioned. And the very first thing we need to do is say, Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. Come into my heart and I'll take the sin in my life and clean it out. And uh, give me that peace that only you can give and purify myself from the sin that's in my life so that I can be free from that sin. And Romans tells us, the book of Romans says that we are free from sin. And he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And you know what that says? Not just freedom from sin, but freedom from the effects of sin. The effects that impact us with, with things like anxiety. So I want you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, I pray that there will be peace in our hearts. Let the peace of God just reach clear down deep into their hearts and let them experience what only you can give. You may be within the sound of my voice and you may, be need, you may need to get right with God. For whatever reason, maybe you've never accepted Christ into your life. Maybe, maybe you're right now, you're, you're out, you know you're away from God. You need to realign yourself with God. Would you just pray with me? Pray with me right now. Put your hand over your heart. Lord Jesus, I come to you. Go ahead and say those words. Lord Jesus, I come to you. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me, O oh Lord, from these burdens. Cleanse me from the, this life that has been away from you and bring me myself back into alignment with you. And in that forgiveness, I can have peace. So Lord, forgive me. And let me know the lavish love of Jesus Christ in my life. 
We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, sing with me, would you? You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. Say it out. You're all I want. Help me know you are near. Say it again. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know you are near. Draw me close to our prayer, Lord. Never let me go. I lay it all down again to hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. No one else will do. Nothing else can take your place To feel the warmth of your embrace Lord, help me find a way Bring me back to you Say it, cry right out to the Lord You're all draw near to you, knowing that you are the source of peace. And so, Lord, the anxiety we lay at your feet. We trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to thank you for joining us. It's good. It's good having you with us today. And uh, I just pray that God will touch you. Now, I'd love to hear from you if you want to write some comments. If you have a prayer need that you want me to know about, you can respond to this video. You can Send me a text or you can send me an email, whatever. Just respond. And know this, that God loves you. He knows where you are. He knows what you need. And if you, if you just pray and hear his voice and respond to him, watch what God's going to do in your life. And then I just want to say thank you for your giving. It makes a difference. See, our sole support is you. And so as you give, God's going to bless us as a church. And we are going to continue to see our, our missions met and our, all the stuff that we support met. That God will be, the kingdom of God, I should say, shall expand. So be blessed today. Have a great week this week.